afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. One of the many wonderful things about Vermont is the history and heritage of our communities. From the largest city to the smallest town, you'll find historical societies just about everywhere. Today we present the story of an historical society that became a museum. It happened in the city of St. Albans. To learn more, I'm joined by two guests. Alex Lenning is the executive director of the St. Albans Museum and Don McFeeders is the co-president of the museum's board of directors. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. Now, Alex, what do people find when they come to the museum? So what we do is we tell the stories of St. Albans, uh, Franklin County, and northwestern Vermont. And uh, there are a great variety to choose from. I know we're going to talk in a minute about some of the things you can see while you're here. Um, but I wanted to touch a bit on uh, what are kind of the, the overview things. And it's really about people and places and ideas. Um, we're proud of things like the Smith family mm -hmm. and the contribution they made to St. Albans. So, for example, we're the only place you can see the original uh, ladies from the fountain in uh, Taylor Park, right on the Village Green in St. Albans. Now, this was part of the original fountain, is that correct? Correct. So there was a restoration project a few years ago. We were able to uh, document and display the original statues from the fountain. Mm -hmm. uh, we're known for some artwork and, and things you can see. Uh, I mentioned the Smith family. They were politicians, philanthropists, entrepreneurs. Um, we're also known as the Rail City, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, certainly a big part of our heritage. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in the national pastime, there was the uh, Vermont Northern Baseball League in which St. Albans played a really important role. Um, it's also about hometown life and local businesses and things like that. Um, so what's sort of world famous in St. Albans was Romeo Raymond's Barber Shop and we actually <laughs> were able to recreate the interior of a shop in the museum. That's wonderful. We also tell the story of St. Albans Bay and Lake Champlain. So it's really about our community, the people in it, and how they shaped our history, uh, including Native peoples. Mm -hmm. And so, Don, can you talk a little bit about the museum's founding and how it got started? It started back in 1966 with a group of interested citizens mm -hmm. in, in the St. Albans area who used to meet in homes and other locations to talk about the history and the heritage. And, and then in 1971, when the, sc uh, the school, the present location, became available because we went to a centralized school system in St. Albans, and from there, we started to collect f photos, and artifacts, and, and all the other many things that go into a museum. But it started in, back in, in the mid-60s and then has evolved to where it is today. Well, like many museums, I'm guessing you rely a lot on volunteers. Volunteers are extremely important. Alex is the only <laughs> full-time paid person. We have a summer intern. We have a couple part-time individuals that assist on a couple projects. But it's the volunteers, and I think this is the interesting part to me, is that yeah, we have volunteers to serve on the board, we have committees, we have uh, people that are involved in the exhibits, but those individuals, those volunteers have stories to tell. Whether it's the railroad, uh, people that have come out of the railroad and been involved, or people that have been involved with many of the other exhibits, they've got a story to tell and they're ready to tell that story. Uh, it's, uh, it's they're there and prepared to uh, share with all of us what's and so going you were, on. You were with me a couple of months ago when you opened your new exhibit on the history of farming in Franklin County. In fact, you have rooms throughout the museum that house a variety of exhibits. Uh, and today you brought along a number of photographs. So you're going to give sort of our viewers a virtual tour, if you will, um, of the museum, starting with the military room. Yeah, we're going to, yeah. The military room is just a quick flash of the historical history of, uh, of the military action that the United States has been involved with, started back in the revolutionary days. And the interesting thing that I see anyway is it tries to pull out some of the local people that have been involved. So it's not just some worldwide description of military action, but it's what occurs uh, by local people. People's and stories. We also, it, yeah, it's a local people's story. Also, the, the Civil War uh, action, the, the St. Albans Raid, is an important piece of that action and, and describes, you know, the people that are involved, the locations, it, it goes out beyond St. Albans, and so it, it's the people and the places that we try to describe in that, uh, in that room. Now, no, Alex, you're going to talk a little bit about more details. 
Yeah, so the raid was a Confederate attack on St. Albans in October 1864, a group of about uh, approximately 20 Confederate soldiers who had um, come into town disguised, pretending to be tourists and visitors and seminary students, robbed three banks simultaneously, um, had held citizens at gunpoint in the park. Unfortunately, there was one fatality uh, of a local resident, and they made off um, with money and, and valuables. And the idea was to bring the war home, to just kind of scare the North um, and to let them know, you know what's happening um, to our cities and our homes in the South, we can do the same thing to you. So it was about intimidation, it was about capturing money, and the, the intent was to burn the town. Fortunately, it was raining that day, and that part of the plot was foiled. Do we know why St. Albans was targeted? Uh, so there were several northern targets. We believe the best reason is the proximity to the border. So the fact mm. that it was so close to Canada, uh, there was, uh, of course, Confederate sympathizers in Canada. It was easy to infiltrate um, and to uh, really strike a blow uh, you know, to the north in terms of psychological effect. And what else is in the room? So uh, the military room, when we talk about it, it's really about Vermonters in conflict from the Revolutionary War, obviously Vermont. Um, you know, from our founding period in our country has an important history mm -hmm. uh, straight through to the Gulf War. So you can see uniforms and artwork and those things on display, um, stories of soldiers and ordinary Vermonters who served, uh, examples of weapons from different periods. We're especially uh, proud this year of our exhibit on World War I, uh, given that it's the uh, sort of centennial of uh, the conclusion of the war, 1918. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can learn more about soldiers who went to school in our building and ended up uh, going uh, over to Europe and, and serving and fighting. And where do some of these artifacts come from? The great part about our museum is this idea that it is sort of citizen curated. Um, so almost all of our collections, you know, we do purchase items from time to time, but almost all of our collections are donated. These are community members, organizations, businesses, people coming in who live, work, uh, or spend time in Franklin County, Northwestern Vermont, who's saying, this history is important or this story needs to be captured and presented and so we're so grateful that we have such a strong and positive community response to provide this information and this history for us to steward and display. So it's really interesting that people will see these objects and there's a story behind each and every one of them. We've had people walk out saying I learned something about my family that I didn't know or I learned I lived here all my life and I didn't know this about my hometown and uh, to me those are the most exciting moments and really why we are who we are. And now another exhibit room is devoted to railroads, of course, because St. Albans is known as the rail city. Railroads was the ac economic engine for St. Albans in the, in the greater St. Albans area since the mid 1800s. And so what we've tried to describe is some of that history and that heritage uh, through artifacts, photos, and also it's an ever changing uh, room as well. This year we have a headlight off one of the steam engines, a new the item that mm -hmm. uh, so if you were here last year there's some new things to see in that room that describes that history and uh, we can share some of the economic benefit that has has existed for for the many years for the St. Albans being called the railroad city talk a little bit more about that Alex well there used to be 23 tracks downtown in a railroad headquarters building that took up an entire block and all that's left now is one set of tracks in a portion of that building. So uh, as Don mentioned, it really was a part of our economic history, part of our social history. People came uh, here to work on the railroad. It allowed us to impact New England and the country in terms of goods that we were able to both export and to help uh, in their travel to other places. So it, it's really unique room. It's a, a place where you can learn about the everyday railroad worker. You can see examples of uniforms, equipment, and really just how important, it's, it's hard to imagine today how important rail was to our community. And so the Smith family played a significant role in the 19th and 20th century in Franklin County. Tell us about the family in their place in the museum, Don. I call them the movers and shakers of, <laughs> of Franklin County and really beyond. They uh, came, came to St. Albans in the late 1800s. They founded the railroad and uh, that railroad uh, that wasn't just in St. Albans, but throughout uh, New England, and then it also went up into Canada. So it, it, that family was a critical part of the economic and social and political fabric. Many of the family members moved on into politics. They uh, became governors and uh, congressmen. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one of the sons uh, was the governor during the Civil War, the governor of Vermont. So the family had a, 
has had a long tradition and history, and we're the, the movers and shakers of our community. And so what will people see in the Smith room, Alex? So it's an interesting representation because the, the Smith family was sort of of St. Albans, but also brought the world into St. Albans. And unfortunately, their um, wonderful mansion, their home is no longer with us. Um, but the artifacts that you can see in the room include some of the original furniture uh, from that house. Um, they, uh, as many prominent families did, completed grand tours of Europe and brought home artifacts and pictures. So you can learn about the different members, the, the things they were involved in, whether they were politicians, whether they were philanthropists. Many were entrepreneurs. They were heavily invested in the railroad. So it's kind of a glimpse of, as Don said, these people who played a critical role in shaping the story of our town and what was their daily life like, you know, what was their business life like, um, where did their travels bring them, what did they bring back to St. Albans, and how did they bring St. Albans to the world. So it's a, it's a very unique family that stretches across generations. That's wonderful. Now, in what ways does the museum detail life in the 20th century in Franklin County? I would say three examples. The medical room would uh -huh. be one, the uh, Sterling Weed display in the classroom. Classroom shows the uh, lady who was a teacher mm -hmm. for 50 years and uh, was extremely important to the St. Albans community. The Sterling Weed, a man who uh, taught 4,000 students and was a hundred. All uh, about the music. All about the music, 104 years old when he passed on. He was an intricate part of the St. Albans music community and the St. Albans community as a whole. The medical room, I like the pieces, <laughs> the Norman Rockwell painting of the of the doctor's office we have that office there we have the painting and then there's a history of the hospital evolution and development that that has occurred in st albans an extremely important part of the of the history and the and the heritage of st albans is the medical mm -hmm. so in those three rooms we get a real sense of some of the of the uh, community and some of the important aspects. Now you have two new exhibits too that open this season. What's what's new? Farming in Franklin County mm -hmm. is the is the one that's that is a new one. It's it's focused on some of the changes that have occurred in farming over the years. Uh, I think of the one piece 1852 there's a that described the uh, butter train mm -hmm. moving butter into Boston and all the way up to today's farming. So it, we've tried to talk about the farming uh, changes. We've talked about the ag business changes. Uh, we've got to focus on, on maple, dairy, mm -hmm. uh, the community of, that surrounds the farming community. And there's also the women's realm. Yeah, the women's realm is, uh, is an, our attempt to really focus in on some of the, the women back in the mid 1800s. But this year, we've got five uh, women local artists mm -hmm. and are focusing on the things that they have been involved with to expand and enhance. And I think this is one of the, just another example of the changing exhibits that we try to make every year. It's an addition, it's a change, mm -hmm. it's a, they see another aspect. We've got about a minute left, Alex. Do you have traveling exhibits well as well? We do. So there's three this year. Uh, the one currently on display on loan from the Vermont Historical Society is Everywhere a Sign. Mm -hmm. It's all about signs and symbols and icons in Vermont history. Coming next month is uh, World War I in America on loan from the Gilder Learman Institute of American History in New York City. And at the end of our season, Portrait of a Forest uh, is a photography exhibit coming to us from the Vermont Folklife Center. Wow, that's terrific. How important is it, do you think, to keep things changed up and to keep new things coming in? There's always a reason to come back to SAM. You know, we're, we're a place for discovery and exploration for all ages, all interests. Um, so we encourage people to come back and check out things because we do make uh, transitions in our exhibits each and every year. And so how can viewers find out more, including your location and hours when you're open? So the best way to find us is either online or giving us a call. So we're uh, at 802-527-7933 on the web, www.stamuseum. Org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Terrific. I want to thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.